Fungal cankers usually develop on trees that are stressed or weakened, somehow predisposed to infection by these opportunistic pathogens. In addition, specific apple cultivars can play a role in this infection, either through uh, their natural susceptibility or high degree of susceptibility to a particular fungal pathogen, or their high susceptibility to stress. In the past few years, we've observed an outbreak of fungal canker disease on some new apple cultivars. These are our new strains of Macintosh, Linda Mac, Ruby Mac, Pioneer Mac, we've also seen this on Marshall Mac. These Macintosh strains grown on dwarfing rootstocks appear to be highly susceptible to canker diseases and their associated shoot dieback. And this is very important because in Michigan, since 2006, we planted well over 300,000 Linda Mac trees and over 300,000 Ruby Mac trees. So these trees are coming into significant production and these canker problems are, are causing a significant issue in terms of these trees, the, the health of these trees. These new Mac cultivars make up over 50% of all the Macintosh trees currently grown in Michigan. And while we've occasionally observed canker diseases on other Macintosh strains, uh, even cultivars such as Gala, all grown on dwarfing rootstocks. We're terming this uh, disease occurrence of these new cankers an outbreak because it's fairly specific to Linda Mac, Ruby Mac, etc. And also uh, we're seeing, in, in some orchards, we're seeing a, a very high level of symptoms, a very large number of trees infected. Symptoms on these varieties are most commonly first observed when the trees are a minimum of four years old and usually the year after the first harvested crop. The major symptom observed is, is death of infected limbs, and in a lot of cases, the infection can be on the main leader of the tree. Symptoms are usually sporadic in affected orchards, but sometimes significant numbers of trees can be affected. My lab started a project in 2008 with major goals of identifying the pathogen or pathogens involved and examining methods of disease control. This work is being done in collaboration with Dr. Jana Beckerman of Purdue University and is funded by the Michigan Apple Committee. We established this block of 125 Linda Mac trees on the Michigan State University Plant Pathology Farm in East Lansing, Michigan in 2009. In the spring of 2010, we inoculated representatives of all of our canker-causing isolates. The trees were wounded and the wounds were treated with dry ice to simulate freeze injury prior to inoculation. This is because we have associated the canker disease in a lot of cases with winter injured trees. We confirmed the pathogenicity of the black rot, white rot, anthracnose, cytospora, nectria, and fusarium canker fungi. The alternaria fungi do not cause disease under these conditions. The black rot and the anthracnose fungi were particularly virulent, killing inoculated stems within 30 to 45 days. The anthracnose fungus is troubling because in some regions anthracnose disease can be a significant problem and can occur on many different apple cultivars. Uh, one region where anthracnose is a big issue is in the Pacific Northwest in British Columbia. However, there's a lot of differences between British Columbia conditions and Michigan conditions, for example, uh, one being that they don't freeze very often over winter. And we think that our uh, cold winter conditions keep the anthracnose fungus at bay. Uh, under normal situations. Secondly, we've only observed anthracnose canker diseases on these new MAC cultivars. We haven't observed them on other cultivars and uh, we've done sampling looking for this problem for five years now. So this is why we term this disease an outbreak on new apple cultivars and we don't think it's going to become a problem on existing other apple cultivars grown in Michigan. Our data regarding the involvement of multiple fungal pathogens in this canker disease also suggests that there's important horticultural issues with these new cultivars in play. Perhaps newer plantings of these Macintosh cultivars on dwarfing rootstocks are not hardening off well and some early winter cold weather is causing damage to tissues thus enabling infection by these opportunistic fungi. Oftentimes when we observe these canker symptoms in trees uh, it appears that these trees are winter injured and, and uh, we do think that these cultivars could be more susceptible to winter injury and then subsequent canker infection. Also there's been much talk lately of the effects of glyphosate herbicide use on apple tissues. 
Most interesting is that glyphosate injures apple bark tissue, not enough to kill the tree, but just enough to allow an opportunity for fungi to infect wounded areas. Thus, herbicide issues may also be in play in terms of providing access to fungal pathogens, and these cultivars such as Lindemac and Rubimac may be more highly susceptible to this kind of damage than other Macintosh strains. Some thoughts on why we're observing this disease in Macintosh now when this cultivar has been a staple of the Michigan apple industry for many years. The first observation is that symptoms are expressed on newer cultivars of Macintosh, cultivars that have had very little field testing prior to release by nurseries. Our current apple marketing system demands new and improved varieties all the time. New cultivars go from discovery to nursery propagation very quickly. In this accelerated system, growers assume all the risk when planting new apple cultivars with little or no research on possible novel cultivar specific problems being done prior to field planting. For now, what can growers do if they observe these canker and dieback symptoms in their Macintosh orchards? Well, control of anthracnose and any of these opportunistic fungi is basically similar. Right now there are no known fungicides available that can either uh, prevent or eradicate these infections. We are uh, studying fungicide sensitivity of the many different fungal strains involved in this disease. Uh, we're still working on what known, what known fungicides we have and when can we spray them. One of the issues with these fungi is because we have so many different fungi causing this disease, they're going to be sporulating at all times of the year. And so it, it does seem that uh, controlling this disease with fungicides is going to be relatively impractical. Other potential mechanisms of control, one of those could be the use of copper in the fall, both to accelerate defoliation of trees, and that could enhance their earlier hardening off in the wintertime and uh, potentially to also control any wounds caused by leaf scars that might be infected by these fungi. Balancing tree nutrition is also important to maintain the health of the tree and also to uh, prevent any excess stress on the tree. But then finally, aggressive pruning is the best bet right now to limit disease occurrence by limiting inoculum, limiting sporulation from these infected dying back shoots. As these cuttings are pruned, they should be removed from the orchard and burned because many of these fungi are also known to sporulate from dead uh, tissue.